Hey, the Georgian kitchen is very inspiring. And in this video, you will get a picture of the Fusion kitchen. When you travel along the Silk Road and Caucasus, you will have influence on, from the west from Turkey and the east from Persia. And it has also been part of Soviet and before that Russia. So there's a lot to explore here. I've been on a press trip and got very inspired. Story of the large oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is very, very, very uh, interesting story. How the things are born, you know, the traditions are born. Hi, hi. <laughs> Hello, my name is Tekunega and I am a chef and owner of Cafe Litera, Culinarium and Culinarium Pacheria. So these, these are my three restaurants. So, and I'm very happy to host you here. So. <laughs> Yeah, I'm also very happy to be here because you have a very special philosophy about what traditional food is and what fusion food is. So could you tell us a little bit about that? Uh, so for uh, Georgia, uh, the fusion was always tradition. So because we are, our geographical uh, place is like, a, and there's the Silk Road, we were always influential in the, the Persian cuisine, in the um, Ottoman, in the Indian, Chinese, so it's all the crossroads, all of the East and the West, and where this, this uh, different culture meets. And that's why this is also very, our cuisine was always fusion, always, always, always. When you try the Georgian food, you, you feel the influences, the Indian. And I, I also think I already tasted it now. Yeah, you taste yeah, it now, absolutely. then you feel the some Persian, uh, because so many herbs, so many yogurt, so many pomegranate, yeah, and yeah. you have this uh, Turkish uh, Ottoman cuisine, yeah, so the special. kebabs, and it's like, but it's all uh, tolmas, and also the Greek, and also Slavic food, and the Russian food. So this is this is what it, all of uh, the Georgian food is all about. So, but then, uh, like I said, the, uh, somehow this tradition is uh, stopped. Because this during the Soviet times, you know, this all this uh, everything was standardized and yeah. the, uh, food especially. Yeah. And we were so obsessed to keep our tradition and keep our identity that we closed. We lost the tradition of innovate. We lost the tradition of fusion because we wanted to keep everything like it was. So yeah. The language, the culture, the food. So it's understandable. It's very understandable. So and these seventy-five years and then the 20 years of stagnation uh, give very bad, um, for Georgia, deep, uh, bad influences. So. And what I'm doing now, I'm continuing the tradition what we lost. So yeah. It's not that I'm, actually I'm traditionalist, so not in a way, uh, because this, uh, what I'm doing now, I'm bringing the new ingredients from uh, Europe or from outside. I'm working close with the farmers. I'm planting the uh, vegetables, what we don't have. For example, the, you try today the um, artichokes. This is the mm. first Georgian artichokes or the Georgian olive oil. So, and also uh, the tradition, uh, Innovation means also rediscovering what we lost, what was ours. And in this case, this all this wild grease you try today. This is the, rediscover, the rediscovering this Georgian traditional food that we also lost so many dishes, you know. And now, because um, the Georgian food is very diverse, but still very, very little, little part of it what we're using, like yeah. in the wine. Yeah. So we lost Great. so many. We lost it's a good. It's such a yeah. good work and so interesting. Yeah. It's very inspiring. So thank you so very much. Absolutely. Thank you. <laughs> there are many kinds of architecture in Tbilisi and you can see the mix of cultures here all over. And uh, the city is also founded because of the water resource. And here you have the old historical bath. Yes. I'm visiting. 
visiting the bazaar, go down to see all the herbs that is used in the Georgian kitchen. So uh, I want to sh explain you about the seasonal herbs and the most popular herbs that we use in Georgia. So the coriander basically is the staple herb or that we use in everywhere, in everything. And it's, uh, it's cultivated, it's grown all year long. This is, this is mint, mint we use with the yogurt to make the sauce mixed of uh, yogurt, cottage cheese and mint together. Kebjalia it's called, it's really delicious. You can find so many beautiful cheeses in this section of the market. In Georgia you have many kinds of breads. They are called puri and kacha puri is the national bread that is thin, baked with cheese and sometimes herbs. It can also be shaped like a kind of boat with an egg in the middle. There's a lot of different ovens and that is also something to explore in Georgia. It's season for the green small plums that are used for the special sauce here because you do not use that much lemon in the Georgian kitchen. And um, you just go to Lovia, so this is a bean, very traditional in Georgia. Almost every table in the Georgia family some This classic King Kali is with soup inside. I think in English you also call them soup companies. Now because of the Hi, today I'm at Alaverdi Monastery in Georgia and here they have made wine, honey and this very unique yogurt for more than a thousand years. The name is Matsuni, a tasty yogurt with honey and walnuts. Mm. It's fresh and sour and it's very nice. Walnut is a staple here in the Georgian kitchen and you can get it in the market in different qualities. Churchkelas here. Churchkelas are basically made out of the nuts and uh, boiling the grape juice mixed with the baking flour. So what you do when you crush the grapes, you start to boil the juice and you add a bit of uh, baking flour. So I'm gonna do two, two, what is it called? Churchkela? Churchkela. Churchkela, okay. So it's one nut and then this is uh, mixture, it's made from grape juice, is it right? Yes. Grape juice? Oh, no, I should move, 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 I have to learn more, so I will recommend this book, Tasting Georgia, and I hope to come back.